Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Ofasha Vuma. I uh, would like to thank you all for your patience and for giving me this opportunity to present outside my slot. Uh, so today I'll be presenting uh, a paper, a research work from uh, the Center for Process Integration and Membrane Technology, uh, Aberdeen University of uh, the Robogono University. The title of the presentation is The Effect of Reservoir Temperature on Carbon Capture and Sequestration Characterization. Here we'll be looking at the research overview, the methodology, the experiment carried out, the data analysis, and uh, there will be a conclusion. Uh, as we, as we, as we, as most of our science uh, uh, exponents are aware, the ID gas law indicates that the gas volume rate is affected by temperature by the mere fact of uh, presentation of the ID gas uh, formula they showed here. So it means that. The way the gas be, the way gas behave in pipelines that connects to our maybe cooking gas or or to our heating system, the gas behave differently when they are uh, placed imposed in a porous media where there is a, nan a nanoscale pore size. So uh, we we so sorry about that. So we argue that if this is the case, then the scale, the scale difference may cause abnormally in trying to characterize carbon capture in reservoirs. Furthermore, in the ejection of CO2, we also understand that the CO2 supply to the reservoir is usually at a lower temperature compared to the temperature of the reservoir, because the reservoir is usually high the reservoir temperature is between the range of 50 degrees Celsius to 350 degrees Celsius. Uh, the theoretical expectation, therefore, is that gas flow rates and temperature interaction that will happen between the injected gas and the in-situ reservoir core will cause the gas to behave differently from how they will behave in a box scale. And also this kinetic uh, interaction, the kinetic temperature, my results to affecting how CO2 is captured, is a sequence in reservoir pores. The methodology used in this uh, research is, a, is an experimental one. Uh, basically, what we did, we, we looked for a, Porous media that are that are similar that have similar structural parameters with those found in reservoirs. Here you see four of the porous media used, and the morphology as shown by the Ida's captures. Uh, the experimental setup is, uh, is a bit simple. We bring we bring in gas uh, from uh, a gas uh, CO two from a gas dam inject it into a core, uh, a, a membrane, sorry, a, a process media core holder, and uh, allow it to permeate through the media. I will take readings at steady state. We conducted it between, uh, between a temperature range, temperature range of 293 kV to 673 kV. And the pressure range is shown there. Also, we're able to gather experimental data of 8,000, about 8,000 uh, records. So, with this data, we did some analysis. I'll find that when we plotted the, this graph is a, is a model graph consisting of, uh, of uh, six graphs, subgraphs. Each of the subgraphs is demarcated by a dotted line, a delta vertical line. and each of the graph represents an isotherm. So if we observe here, you see that the S axis is uh, the injection pressure and the uh, Y axis is the flow rate. It is seen that the flow rate 
increases as the pressure increases. And uh, as the temperature also increases, some of the uh, some of the core samples used allow gas uh, CO2 to also, the gas flow rate to also increase. Why some of the core don't allow it? This could be, what, what uh, we discover is that those core samples that have uh, small pore sizes have different flow regime compared to the ones that have large pore sizes. So the noticing effect could be implicated in this occasion. And the implication of uh, this knowledge is that people who, reservoir engineers who are into injecting CO2 in reservoirs so that the CO2 can be retained in the reservoir, we know which of the reservoir section or site to inject the CO2. The conclusion of the results show that institute temperature affects the nature of the permission of CO2 in different samples, as shown in that graph. The extent of the effect is further modified by the pressure, porosity, and uh, the pore size. So we discover that at certain pressure, the effect of temperature for the gas is more responsive than at other temperatures. So when it's at low temperature, the gases were not responding to temperature very much. But at high, at high pressure, the gases were responding to temperature. So at low temperature, the gases, doesn't, the gases do not obey the Boyce law nor the Schatz law. But when temperature increases, they start obeying the, these laws. Uh, the gas permission was most F, uh, affected in samples with relatively high porosity. So if you have a reservoir that has high porosity, relatively high porosity, then you should be aware that the gas flow rate or the permission or the uh, sequestration of CO2 will be affected by the difference in pressure between your injected CO2 and the reservoir temperature. We also find that, uh, that the larger pore size are more responsive to institute temperature than lower pore size. So what we're saying is that the reservoir that have large pore size, we heat up the gases faster than a reservoir with low pore size. And this is understandable because um, the mechanism, the, the transport mechanism in those pore, those uh, reservoir session with small pore size is different from the one with large pore size. So in conclusion, we'll be able to identify structural parameters that affect the, the way CO2 responds to temperature. Thank you for listening.